cars not printed and cars not issued. From my experience in biometric registration, one needs to be very careful when you are talking of capacity. Enrollment means the people you have registered on your system. That is the 70 million plus they gave. But they went ahead and also said, out of the 17 million, we've printed cars for uh, over 60 million. Mm. And then they said there are cars which they have not printed at all. Meaning that they've registered the people, but they've not printed the cars. Mm. And then they said cars they've not issued, mean that's over 700,000, which are cars that they've registered the people, they've printed the cars, but the cars have not got to the people. Mm. So when you are talking of capacity, yes, they have the capacity to register. But whether they can get the cars issued to the people for the people to use it on the voting day is the challenge we have. Mm. And we have that challenge because I can tell you that when we were doing the biometric registration at SNIT, SNIT belongs to an umbrella body called the ISA, which is part of the ILO. I did receive a query from ILO, from ISA, that how are you going to distribute these cars to the people when you can't do instant registration? And why is this so? It's because of the peculiarities of a developing country when it comes to biometric registration. Number one, we don't have the residential address postal system like you see in the UK, Germany, and the US, where in the morning your card can be dropped in front of your house in the postal bus. We don't have it. Is that fair? Is that a fair comment? Do we not I'm saying have... that we don't have it because nobody comes to drop your letters in front of your house in the morning. Is it not possible, though? It, that would take time to do it. We have started address system, but we don't have it. That is a fact. What we have is a centralized way of posting letters, where the letter goes into your P.O. box and you go and collect it. Mm. The second priority of a developing country is that the labor is very... Uh, it's a migrant labor. I'll give you a typical example. If you register a carpenter today at cantonments, tomorrow he has got a job in Somalia and he's gone. If you want him to come back to cantonments, come and collect the card, I can tell you that if he's in Somalia for months, he will get his card. Mm. Okay. The third is that you have to make sure that the structure you are using for the registration has a public face. And let me explain that. In the case of SNIT, we had over 55 branches spread all over the country. And knowing very well that the key index of success is how the person gets the card, not the fact of registration. Mm. What we did was to make sure that we go out and distribute the cards to the people. We send people to the establishments. In fact, in our case, we are doing even activation of the card. So if we come to Bank of Ghana and we register you, when we finish, we take the cards to Bank of Ghana, we call the people and we activate the card and give it out to the people. One thing we also did, and which I would advise the NI to think of, of adopting that approach, is that in a developing country, you can use the post office system to distribute the cards. And that's what SNIT did. It minimized a lot of undistributed cards. We, at a point in time, also had a lot of undistributed cards that is not issued. The person has not got the card. Now, if the people don't have the card, using it as a basis for the sole basis for identification on the electoral day might pose a problem. So the point I'm making is that Let's draw the, the distinction between registration, the enrollment. That is very easy to do. Because you go out, you, you enroll the people, they go on your system, but you have to print the cards. Let me also add something. If you look at the NI statistics, they even said, cards not printed. It takes time to print those cards. Mm. 
And I can tell you as a matter of fact that there are also cars which will have a lot of errors in them. Yes. It is not intentional. In fact, you saw from the NI release this week that they are opening centers for people to come and correct yes. errors. Yes. I'll give you so, uh, an example we found out at the level of the ILO. The word I and L always creates a problem mm. for some reason. Right. So you see that somebody is called Lati. The time the car come out, his name has been spelled, the Lati instead of the L has I on it. Mm. So there are cars also which will have errors on them. Right. Your capacity to correct these errors is very vital for the election day. Uh, uh, permit me to ask this. Um, you, you've pointed out the very clear difference between uh, the numbers who have their cards and the numbers who are yet to get their cards, either because the card's been printed but not delivered or the card has not even been printed. Now, it occurs to me that if what the, e the, if what the EC wants is to be able to use that data to recognize Ghanaians on election day, then even in the absence of the card, if they have been registered, surely they can connect to the system and just take people's biometrics to identify them rather than the card. Would that not work? That, that is the issue at hand now. That is the issue. Bear in mind that a CI has been sent to Parliament to be passed so that the card will be used as a source, mm. the sole source. I mean, look, if I come there and I don't have a card on the election day and I say I'm Mr. E and my name is there, will you register me if I don't have a card? Will you allow me to vote if I don't have a card? Well, if then you can check your biometrics. Do you, you get the point I'm making? Yeah, I get you. But, but so the they, card if... is fundamental so far as my interpretation of mm. what the EC is trying to say. Okay. But the practical difficulty with biometric is getting the card to the people. Mm. And that is the problem we have mm. now. And we need to find an innovative way, a way of managing in developing countries to get the cards across to the people if we want to use it. Okay. Otherwise, there will be confusion <coughs> on that day on the, if it's to be used for the election. Well, um, that is the point. Okay, but and it's obvious that the NI have accepted that they have problems with the distribution. Okay. You see? One of their problems, as I said, which which also comes up, is the structure you are using. If, for instance, you go to an electoral area and you register people, but the card cannot be issued instantly, so you tell them that three weeks time or so, when the card has been printed, by the time you've printed the card, you have an influx. Come to the district office and collect it. My brother, for... An average Ghanaian in this economy, he has to use for money to go to the district district to collect it. Look at the figure for LIP. You know the LIP project? Yes. Which is actually pillar zero in social security. That's what we call the pillar zero for the vulnerable. You give them money. In some countries, they give them bread and the rest. Look at the amount for LIP that we give per month. And compare to how much it will cost the person to take trotro go to the district to go and collect that and you see the enormity of the of the problem we have mm. i would also like to point out something if you look at the statistics but before you point out something quick question here now you you've asked the question why would somebody want to pick a car where would he even get the money to go and pick his ghana card now we have a situation where for instance if you want to engage in financial transactions you need to have a ghana card is that not enough incentive for people to want to get a Ghana card? Um, I think that at times we do talk without looking at the figures. And that's the point the CPP lady did. How many people have bank accounts? And what is in that account that will compare me? to go and the little money I did for my carpentry work, I'll use it to go and collect a card and send it to the bank. If you don't, if you don't have a Ghana card, you can't reg register your SIM card. Is that not enough motivation? Yes. And let me tell you what is really happening. 
again, these are all based on things we said it has been done already. There's something about biometric acts. If there's no incentive or there's no compulsion, who cares about going to collect a card? The national health card, there's an incentive for it. You need the card before you can get some health facilities that you don't pay for. So there's an incentive for you to move and go and collect the Ghana health card. There is an incentive to collect a social security card. Because if Smith insists that when you retire or before you get a benefit, you have to be registered and show a card. When I'm between 55 to 60 years where I can retire, I will, there will be an incentive for me to go and go and collect a card. Beyond incentive, the other approach is what we call the compulsion approach. You have to link the card to something. If you don't get the card, you can't do this. The compulsion approach is the approach where they say that, look, all banks insist on cards. So I'm being compelled to go and collect the card or to go and be registered so that I can do, I can go and um, do my banking transaction. But bear in mind that that will apply to that cohort of people who are banking, who have some trans- big transactions of useful transaction to do in a, in, a, in a bank. My brother, if my balance at the bank is 20 Ghana cities, you think I'll go and use 30 Ghana cities to go and collect a card? How about your SIM, card? your SIM card? Then you let's look at the SIM card registration. Yeah. Again, a beautiful idea. But you see, let me also make one point. All this NI card issue, you get me? I remember when I was in office, when the thing was about to start, I received a letter from Jubilee House asking us to nominate people. So we gave them a strong IT team, and the, strong, the team, IT team is a very strong team, and they had the meetings. But the report I received made it quite clear that along the line, we have to link the card to the same card if you want to have total benefit of the digitization. You get me? But the idea was to do it not by physical linking, people going there, but trying to maybe harmonize the two databases, the, the, the data centers, so that through a self-serving application, the harmonization can be done. Because such social projects, you need to make sure there's a human face, and therefore you don't put too much pressure on the on, a, on already heated system and the poor people in the developing country. However, to even do that harmonization, or to do the self-service application, right, from the comfort of your computer and home, you should have the card. And it is the issuance of the card, the distribution, which is the problem now. Okay. Because even if you have to do the self-service application, which um, my good friend Osla has now said will be brought up, it's likely you may have to have the card. But if the card has not been issued, if it has not been distributed and you've got it, of what use is the self-serving application? Great. Now, so there are so many issues involved. I'm saying that there are so many issues involved in this thing. Fortunately, we have a time frame, uh-huh. isn't it? Between yes. now and maybe the next election, 2024, or as we've said, 2028, to put our shoulder to the wheel right. and go uh-huh. out and get the cash distributed. Um, uh, Mr. Thompson, you, you, we, the, the question Winston was asking was about whether the SIM card registration process will not be an incentive for people to get the Ghana card. That's you've what I'm saying. That, that is the compulsion have, approach. Yes, you have reiterated the point that even to do a remote uh, uh, registration of the SIMs, as was originally suggested, you will still need your Ghana card. So yes. you, there, there is your incentive. Isn't it? Yeah, but what I'm saying that the, the incentive should have a, a form of a, a human face to it. You get me? Asking people to go and form lines, go to the telecos and do it was just too much. Yeah. Fortunately, we realized it and okay. we said that we will now do the same service, which we should have done. Yeah, we should have started with anyway. But I'm saying that even if it is an incentive, go and do it. Where is the card? 
So that would take me to the next point. Where is the card? And we are working with a deadline. So if we are able to get now, we have forty million, you know, uh, SIM cards in the country uh, estimated. If we are able to work within the deadline, wouldn't that get a lot of people? Many of whom, majority of whom, are eligible to vote, get the Ghana card, which in turn becomes a source document to engage in continuous voter registration? But a very good question. Right. But I like your question. If, is the if which is the problem we are facing, mm. it is not registering them. Let's get that straight. It is getting them the card. If we are able to do that, and we are sure that over 90% or more on the voters' register have their cards, you get me? It might be difficult for somebody to argue against it. Okay. You see, right, because even on the day of the election, or let me approach it that way, we have two organizations working not along the same parameters. The NI job, as Dr. Atefa has pointed out, is a continuous job ongoing. But the EFC will have to close a register at a point in time. Am I right? Yes, you are. Right. You, you cannot so guarantee it less than 60 days elections. So even on the date of the close of the, of the, of the register, where we have, uh, then at times we even have to go and check the register and then they give a final deadline. Somebody will even be 18 and will be registered. But that I think most probably will not go on the electoral register. So we cannot have 100% of everybody having a card on the register. But if the margin is very minimal in terms of people who have really received their card, it might be good to go with the card. Sure. But, but, but I mean, in, 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 in but previous elections, the two organizations should work together and aim at. All right. Uh, and then finally, they have to check the statistics very well, mm. the relationship very well. Like the CPP lady said, the, the voters register will have a list of people. The national ID will have a list of people. How do we make sure we check that the two lists again, really correspond? in terms of integrity. If you are Winston, your name is appearing Winston here. And also in terms of the numbers, this is the point, the beautiful point made by the CPP lady on the news file. Okay. Some work ought to be done by the two bodies and they have to work together. Sure. Because there are inherent problems in biometric registration, as I pointed out. Please hold on. Let me get to Osman al Hassan and find out what his concerns are. Osman. Yes. Yes. What are your concerns? The EC says, I mean, they want to use the Ghana card as a source document for continuous voter registration. That should be good news, isn't it? <laughs> good morning. And good morning to your listeners. Um, yes. I think it should have been good news. But as uh, my colleague on the other side and people on news file have already addressed, or, or, or referred to, there will be challenges. And my concern is that, let me start with this introduction, that you see, the Electoral Commission is the only institution by which we operationalize our choice of having a change of government. And we all know that any time the Electoral Commission doesn't exist or perform its function, something replaces it, something we don't like. And so when there are issues, when the Electoral Commission begins to take some uncompromising stand, which to me, with all due respect, is not reasonable, it gives a cause to worry. Having said that, you could hear that all the things my brother on the other side said has just indicated that there is a possibility that at the closure of voter registration, people will not have the voter cards. But that's always been the case. I mean, we, we, we do a limited voter registration, sometimes nine months to the elections, and that's the end of it. In here in the CI, the Electoral Commission says 
and you can't do that less than 60 days. Isn't that even an improvement of what we've had all this while? That's why I'm saying that. However you look at it, however you look at it, given the current... Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Go ahead. However you look at it, given the current challenges, that, you see, the card, it has processes. First, you take the data. Then you print the card. Then you issue it. Then you transmit it to the to the to the to the, pe- to the person entitled to possess it. And my brother on the other side has beautifully enumerated the challenges. Look, as we speak, people are registered; they don't have their card. People's cards have been printed; they don't have it, and they don't know where they are. And all these problems just tells us that it is very very plausible plausible than the other option that at the closure of voter registration people who are qualified to vote will not have the voter the Ghana card that is all that's all there is and to base and to resolve this only by reference to some confidence that it will be done is not reassuring enough and but the point I'm also making is this, that given that, um, okay, why would they want to make the Ghana card the only document of identification? What are the requirements of voting? What are the qualifications of voting? Age, citizenship, and soundness of mind. Yes. Let's take away the soundness of mind because that cannot be established by any the card. But if you take age and citizenship, the question you will want to ask is, does the Ghana card establishes, is the, is the Ghana card the only document that establishes this? What's the answer? And, 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 let, me, and let me make reference to the, the answer um, the Electoral Commission gave about having to use the, only the Ghana card for this process. That they want to avoid some chaos and historical controversies about minors voting and non ghanaians voting. That's what I heard. I might be corrected. I stand to be right. corrected. But this, yes, this is what I heard. That, and then a reference to a constitutional provision that says that the electoral commission has the, shall compact shall shall have the authority to make a regulation for the effective performance of its function you see that that was not the argument nobody is arguing that the electoral commission doesn't have the authority or function to make that regulation or that cid place in parliament no our argument is that the effective performance of their functions will not yield from the choice that they have made. That's all. And if they can demonstrate to us that the card, the Ghana card, is the only effective way by which they can perform this function of voter, continuous voter registration, then we will agree with it. But there's, not, there's, no, there's no argument that in that regard convincing us that the Ghana card is the only card that is the most effective in getting every citizen of about 18 or 18 and uh, to, to vote. And secondly, you will see that even the Ghana card, the Ghana card is a secondary document. The primary document by which you acquire the Ghana card are the birth certificates and the passport. But you would see, when I watch the program, when birth certificates or passport was mentioned, you could see the Electoral Commission representative shaking his head, indicating a serious repugnance to the use of that card and registering. But as we all agree, that the right to be registered to vote is a right in Article 42. And it is not the duty of the Electoral Commission as Bentro said to now put rest- stringent restrictions, which, with all due respect, are not reasonable, to fetter this right 
when I have the document by which I can acquire the Ghana card, and I am not able to acquire the Ghana card, but I have those very primary documents with me, is it not reasonable for you to also request that I bring them for you to see? Okay. And, 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 and let me tell you, look, the only document that can show your age eh, and your citizenship, you cannot do with that document if you don't, you, if you want to establish someone's citizenship and his age. It's the best step. Now, if you go to the NIA, they will request your passport or your birth set or something. Now, why are we now repugnant to the primary documents? That's number one. Number two, you see, even with the use of the Ghana card, the Electoral Commission is telling us that the challenge process still exists. Do you know what that means? Tell me. It means it is still possible that someone will be identified, even with a Ghana card, someone would be identified or alleged to have been a minor or not a citizen. And you know that non-citizen foreigners are permitted by law to have the Ghana card. The, yes. the NIE law, a law, permits foreigners to have it. And it permits minors to have it. Yeah, but you can, so, see, you can see the age of a foreigner who has a Ghana card. It, it's indicated that he's not a Ghanaian. So that's not an issue, is it? Yes, I mean, but I'm, try, I'm just trying to tell you that if the person is not a Ghanaian and the mistake is made on it, that is a Ghanaian, can you do anything about it? That's the point. And the challenge process, if it exists, it means that, okay, someone can be said to be a citizen, maybe on the Ghana card, and yet another person knows him not to be a citizen, or a minor, mm -hmm. but not but it's indicated perhaps by mistake that he's not a minor. Now, at the end of the day, the very primary document you rejected and by which you have disenfranchised people from registering will be the same document you'll be requiring to ascertain the people you have registered by the Ghana card because their status has been challenged. Okay. So you move... Away, where you are running from is actually where you are running to. <laughs> okay. So um, my point is, why don't you make it flexible? Um, uh, and the point is that the chaos that they refer to, why is the NIA not having the chaos? Because those are the primary documents they are using to issue the card. Okay. Uh, lawyer, why are some, they not having those this. controversies? Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can yeah, hear you. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, in the end... Is this not a, a, a question of numbers? L let me explain. Um, so in the last um, uh, voters uh, uh, registration exercise, oh, we, um, we, uh, th we learned that the majority of people actually use the Ghana card. More people use the Ghana card than the passport. We also know that at the moment, there are only about 4 million eligible people um, in Ghana who don't have their Ghana um, cards who haven't registered for the Ghana card. Now, those 4 million will include people who are between 15 and um, 18, so they are not even eligible to vote. So the number that are eligible to vote but don't yet have the Ghana card will be less than that 4 million. Also, even if we were to uh, say that the passport and those documents are allowed, there are still more people today with the Ghana card than the passport. So are we not fighting for... Uh, something that actually statistically is less uh, um, likely to happen, that a okay, person will turn up with a passport rather than a Ghana card? Let me, let me first answer your question about the number of people who would perhaps by the close of voter registration not have the Ghana card. Okay? My answer to that is, look, if even one person is disenfranchised. One person. It should be an issue of concern to us. Why? Because the winner of the, elect the election needs 50 plus one. That's number one. Number two, if you are talking about the 
what's the other issue you you you, you the question you asked uh, by the by the time we are ready to um uh, you know vote yes the people who would have come to register uh, come to add their names to the register yes yes are more likely to turn up with a Ghana card than a passport so you see you are using probability here you didn't say they would have you say more likely to have just because so there are more people with a Ghana card than a passport yes but it's not we are not making reference to only passports we are also making reference to other documents like birth set driving licenses documents you can see on the face a that a you are a citizen or not a court has already ruled on birth certificates yes but the point i'm making is that suitable. we are all talking about the 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 reasonable the 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 the, 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 the degree of reason that is involved in all this because the ruling of the court itself and i have written about it i have also written about that ruling that to me is not reasonable for you to reject the primary document by which a secondary document is now heavily relied upon okay right. so it is not the, only the passport we are talking about many almost everyone body has a birth certificate mm. all right so okay. if we have Ghana card, majority of people having Ghana card, and majority of people having birth sets, and ma why don't we allow these documents so that if one doesn't have one, he might have the other, and because he's qualified to be registered to vote, then there will not be hitches. He will not be disenfranchised. Okay. Do you get my point? Yes, let's uh, let's uh -huh. take a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll hear more from our guest. Osmalan Hassan is a lawyer, um, and S. Thompson also is a lawyer, but he's also the former director general of SNIT, and they did go through a biometric uh, registration exercise. So some uh, some context there. Where, when we come back, we'll hear more from our two guests. What? It seems Royal Foam did not get the memo. Times are tough. Prices are going up. They're giving 10% discount, free pillows with every purchase. Hey, Royal Foam. Just when you thought all they manufacture are quality but affordable mattresses and pillows, they take it up a notch by being thoughtful in these hard times. Royal Foam has reduced their prices drastically. Buy a mattress, get a free pillow. Enjoy 10% discount instantly, nationwide. Take advantage. Enjoy Royal Foam. Enjoy the best. Call 020-227-1000 for other hot deals happening at Royal Foam. Royal Foam, rest assured. Malcolm Best Buy is on. Though we are still in tough times, Malcolm says we dare for you. Save big at Malcolm when you best buy your groceries, electronics, furniture, and all your daily need items at the lowest prices. Malcolm, your one-stop supermarket for all your daily needs. Terms and conditions apply. Malcolm, where Ghana truly saves. Malcolm, where Ghana shops. Some institutions touch lives, leave lasting impressions, and are never forgotten. GCB, your biggest and largest bank in Ghana, is rewarding customers who activate their inactive account this season. From now till the end of October 2022, GCB is inviting all customers whose accounts have been inactive for over two years to activate their account and get exciting rewards. Go on, activate your account with any amount at any GCB bank branch nationwide. You may also activate your account on our online platform and enjoy the GCB. CB experience. Customers who activate the account with 100 Ghana CD and above also get a 50 Ghana CD reward at the end of the month. Don't forget, terms and conditions apply. Hurry, get your account activated and link it to your Ghana card. Contact our customer service on 0302 681 531 or on toll free on 0800 422 422 for any information that you may require. GCB Bank PLC, your bank for life. Football's greatest season is here, and DSTV is the stadium with all the action. Enjoy every single match from the FIFA World Cup, Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, the UEFA Europa League, and the UEFA Champions League. The greatest football from the greatest leagues around the world. Ronaldo, Haaland, Messi, Salah, Afena Jan, and Benzema. All week, every week. Get your decoder today for just 169 Ghana CDs and upgrade to compact and be part of sports' greatest stadium only on DSTV. DSTV, it's your moment.
Yes, it's the season of gifting at the Junction Mall. Spend 200 Ghana cities and above every Thursday in any of our shops and stand a chance to spin our wheel of fortune and win loads of surprise goodies. There's lots of fun and entertainment for everyone with kids' fun activities at our playground and a well-spaced sitting area at our food court for family and friends. All security measures to keep you and your loved ones safe during the season are intact. At the road construction zone, there are well-demarcated directions to ease traffic to and from the mall. Don't miss this. Come, shop, spin, and win. Follow us at the Junction Mall GH on Facebook and Instagram or call and WhatsApp us on 0540-221-774 for more information. The Junction Mall. Join, explore, shop, and enjoy. When the world looks at my child, they just see an energetic eight-year-old. But I see more. My Lucy is going to become captain of her school volleyball team, keep excelling in class, and do great things one day. I see a champion. So when I give her Milo with her breakfast every day, it's all part of waking up a champion in her. Don't just wake up your child. Wake up the champion in her. Let Milo with Active Go and the natural goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa help wake up the champion in your child every day. Milo, energy to go further. Milo. This advert is FDA approved. Whatever it is, make it MasterCard. Switch to card for all your payments. Make it MasterCard when creating memories with those you love. Make it MasterCard when streaming your favorite music album or TV series. Make it MasterCard when doing your usual supermarket run, in-store or online. When filling up your tank for a thrilling road trip, make it MasterCard the safe and convenient way to pay. MasterCard. Priceless. It's the most action-packed breakfast show in town. The hottest music. The best giveaways. The great interviews. And all the laughter and fun you can imagine. Don't miss the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. It's the best breakfast show in town. Coffee in your cup. Enjoy on the set. The Super Morning, Morning Show is always the best bet. On Joy 99.7 FM. You're welcome back. It's the Super Morning Show on Joy. Our guests Ernest Thompson and Osman Al Hassan telling us um, what their thoughts are on the EC's plans to make the Ghana card the only document for getting onto the voters' register. We'll continue with them in just in just a moment. But first. Now is the time to enjoy the Royal Foam Mattress at an affordable rate. Well, things are really hard and prices of goods and services are on the rise every day. And that's why Royal Foam is bringing to you a mid-year sales promotion dubbed Wonsu Wumrenye. It's your time to enjoy a 10% discount on the current prices of our mattresses. Yes, a 10% discount on our mattresses with free pillows. So rush to all Royal Foam shops and get a 10% discount on every mattress purchased as well as enjoy our free pillows. Call us 0202-271000. 0202-271000 for more information. Royal Foam, rest assured. Mm, uh, everywhere make hot, baby. Yeah, yes, she, but still, man for enjoy regardless. So grab your favorite big old drink from Trillium Industrial Company Limited Producers of Rush Energy Drink. Guess what? Big old drink gives you 20 bottles for a pack no more 16. So for more bottles for free, be boys, boys, girls, girls, mommy and daddy for the party, funeral, family day out and any other social gathering. No wahala grab any of our, uh, of your flavors, uh, cola, orange, pineapple, apple, cocktail, big or drink, big in taste, big in flavor, big in quantity and very affordable for all. Big or drink, another premium product from Trillium Industrial Company Limited, producers of Rush energy drink and then our mineral water all right let's get back to it and um uh, for, to our two guests i think at this point let's just look forward if uh, and this is how we're wrapping up the conversation if the ec came to you for advice tell them what they should be doing at this point they've already presented a law uh, a bill to parliament what should they be doing at this point to make this process more effective we'll start with you uh, mr ernest thompson Okay, um, I, I, I do think that 
law works in a contest. You, get me? you can send the law to parliament to be passed. You get me? I, I can see a situation where the MPs themselves will have to be a little bit wary because the outcome of that law can even affect some of them. They are, they are constitutional, they are parliamentary fortunes if the card is to be used alone as a source of identification. So I can see the MPs trying to go deep into the issue before passing the law. Depending on, I mean, no matter which side of the divide you belong to, it can also affect you. This is not only about the presidential. Now, let me make one point quickly. The last election, the difference between the presidential uh, winner, that's our president, and the loser, that's GM, was about 500,000 500, or so. Yeah. So if you have over 700,000 cars not issued yet, and bear in mind that this is a moving number, because you can register 10,000 people today, but you can only print out 2,000, or you can only get 2,000 across to them. The difference will come and add to some of the cards which are still not being distributed that is issued. Right. And if you have 700,000 not yet issued, and somebody can, and the president can win the election with 500,000, you see that you have a real problem. It's a decision which can affect the outcome of an election, both at the ministerial, both at the presidential level and also at the MP level. Now, going forward, what I will tell the EC is that one, you need to work closely with the NI before you move forward. Because the EC is not only interested in re voting, it's also interested or should be interested in not in not disenfranchising people. It should also be interested in the integrity of his data, his register. Because it's not for only today. It might be for other elections and so so they need to work together. Secondly, the NIA is running a program quite different from the EC. This program, as I said, is continuous, while this one will have a deadline. Mm. So there's a need to work together. However, for the NI, I think that they need some more assistance. Because at the end of the day, in biometric registration, you haven't done much if you only register and you print the card. Mm. But the, the registrant does not get his card. Nothing has been done. Not mm. much has been done. So we should now concentrate and help them to get their cards to the final uh, uh, registrants. How do they go about it? One, I suggested that based on our experience, they should sign an MOU with the Ghana Post. I believe they should have some data on the PO Box addresses and see whether they can exploit that. It might not solve the problem of distribution, but it might minimize the thousands of cars they may have lying in their offices. Right. He did it, and it did work. Mm. Thank My you. second suggestion... Oh, okay. Uh, one, one more point, and then we'll move on to Mr. Al-Hassan. My second suggestion is that occasionally, and he did it, if you study the, the newspapers at that time, you behave as if you are stopping the project for about a week or two so that you concentrate on distribution of the cars. In fact, at times we stop the project in terms of registration, except for those on the accountant general, because the accountant general was then insisting that if you don't register, they won't pay you. If you have a sneaker, they won't pay you. So we give only exception to them. So tactically, you can stop the, a project for about two weeks with a release, and then you concentrate on printing the, the own printed cards mm. and also distributing the cards and even correcting errors. Right. They, they, have, they have some leeway. And then thirdly, they should look at the structure they are using in doing the, the project, the structure for distribution. As you know, your structure will affect your strategy, your strategy will affect your structure, it will affect your systems, it will affect your style of work. So they should look at their structure again. I don't think they have a lot of offices spread all around the country, although they are doing a national project. So they should see whether they can liaise with institutions which have offices spread around the country like SNIT and the rest, which can assist in the distribution of the, of the, of the cards. Right. They can even use the contact centers to call people and the rest. SNIT has a state-of-the-art contact center over the 
they can take advantage of that. You need everybody on, on board to help the NI achieve what we intend to do. Right. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Osman Al Hassan, uh, your recommendations to the EC? It's simple that they should just withdraw the CI, amend it to allow the use of other documents that can be used to prove age and citizenship in the voter registration process. Mm. If they should stop relying on the NIA, first of all, that they are the, a better institution to establish the accuracy of someone's citizenship or age. Because to rely on the NIA card is to t tell Ghanaians that we are not competent enough or we are not as competent at, as NIA to determine somebody's age or the accuracy of somebody's age or citizenship or let's say bio data on the best set that is being used to get the Ghana card. We are not competent enough. The NIA is, and so they should do the work for us. I think if they want the NIA to take over the Electoral Commission, <laughs> they should let us know that because that is exactly what they are communicating. And so they should withdraw <clears throat> the CI, go and amend it, and ask themselves, what can we do so that at the end of the voter registration process, many uh, or as less people as possible are disenfranchised in the process. Right. That, that point is understood. Uh, but uh, just wanted to ask you, I mean, the National Identification Authority surely yes. is the authority on identification, is it not? Yes, it is. But the point is, factually, if they wanted us to believe that there is some special qualification or competence in the NIA than the birth and death registry, than the driving license, the, 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 the driving license people, and than the electoral commission, then they should have let us know that. Yeah, by definition. Because the process, look, for you to be an ident the National Identification Authority does not necessarily make it the most competent institution to determine the identification in respect of voting. You know, voting is also a special area for the Electoral Commission. And so if voting is your, is your specialty, then you will have to master the identification of people for the purposes of voting. Remember, the NIA is not identifying the people only for the purposes of voting. And so no, their speciality is not geared towards identifying requirement of voting. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to thank you. Um, Osman Hassan is a lawyer. Uh, I also want to thank Ernest Thompson, also a lawyer, and the former Director General of SNED. Thank you both for your time with us this morning. It's a super morning show. More after these. Mm, family and friends. A beautiful gathering. And mm. Is this Nasco 55 inch Smart TV not a product of the Founders Day promotion? Correct. Barbecue started. Makes me want to have a cool one. Sheesh. That fridge has been around since Founders Day. Oh, it's media. Nasco at Media Founders Day promotion. Purchase a 32 inch television at 899 Ghana Cities. Nasco split air conditioner starts at 2,399 Ghana Cities. Na Grab a media refrigerator for only 1,799 Ghana Cities. And mothers, a gas cooker for 1,399 Ghana Cities. Blenders and more are available. Order these from Nasco at media outlets near you. And you your Founders Day. Call 024-243-9437. Having your baby try out different tastes and flavors isn't just about giving them a change of taste. This helps to develop their palate and prepares them better for accepting varieties of adult food as they grow. So go ahead and try any of our six Cerelac variants that is wheat, maize, rice, biscuity, fruit pieces, and millet. Remember, each bowl of Cerelac contains goodness that helps your child's normal growth and development. Cerelac. It's all good, mum. This advert is FDA approved. From the press to the people, you're always hustling. You win some, you lose some, you never give up. 
Persistence, it's what you need to succeed. You want to grow and build your legacy, but even hard workers need a hand. Empower yourself in five days with Google Hustle Academy, a free online business bootcamp, giving you the skills to increase revenue and investments. Apply today.